by the far cards by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. According to the word of God in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sin, therefore, before God and before one another. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore I come before your throne of grace, that I may receive mercy and find grace to help in every kind of need. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, it gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Shout to God with the cry of the Lord. 
For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us, and their enemies under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us. The pride of Jacob will be with us. God has got up with his shout. The Lord will resound the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth. Sing praises to all the earth still. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon the Lord throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together. When the people of the God of Abraham, the rulers of the earth belong to God. And he is highly exalted. Let us 
said to the Father, I thank thee for this day, and gathering us in the presence of your sight. For he has promised that for two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in the midst of us. So we welcome the Lord, praise and honor, glorify you. Lord, we ask that you speak to our hearts today by your Holy Spirit. Lord, whenever it's God in you, I pray that all the ground and die be of no effect. So that we're completely available to all you have for us now. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to you. Holy Spirit, be our teacher now. And let the word of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be truly acceptable in your sight, our strength and our humor. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been studying the Gospel of Mark. Last week, uh, we were talking about the fact that uh, in Mark, Jesus is shown to be an example to us with regards to being baptized in water. We find that Jesus is an example for us to follow throughout the Gospels. This shouldn't surprise us. Because the fact of the matter is that as we read this gospel and we read the other gospels, Jesus will say to the people who belong to him, come and follow me. And following me means not only letting him be the leader, it also means that we do what he does. We live as he lived. And so when we see Jesus entering into certain things, that is an example for us to follow. So just as he was baptized in water, we who follow him are to follow him into baptism. But now there's something else that we're also to follow into, which we see today in the gospel lesson. We find that after Jesus was baptized in water, he came out of the water, we find actually in the gospel of Luke that he was praying. And as he was praying, the Holy Spirit fell upon him in the form of a dove. And he was, from the, what we understand it to be, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is the first instance of that baptism of the Holy Spirit being shown in the Gospel. And the first instance is always very important. That's a biblical way of interpreting things. And if this happened to Jesus, and we're to follow him, then it follows that God the Father wants us to follow him not only into the baptism of water, but also into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But then, if that's so, and it is, because we find in John 14 through 16 that Jesus speaks to his disciples and to all who follow him, and he says these words, Truly, truly, I say to you, this is John 14, 12, he who believes in me, the works I do, he will do also. And greater works than he shall do, because I go to the Father. And then the Lord begins to talk about the Holy Spirit. And how he will send the Holy Spirit to the believers, so they can do the ministry that he was doing. So clearly, we are told by our Lord Jesus himself, that we are to follow him in ministry. And in order to follow him in the ministry of the kingdom on earth, we must have the Holy Spirit. So with that in mind, let's ask this question. If we are to follow Jesus into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what is baptism of the Holy Spirit for? And how do we enter in? Well, let's go with the first question. What is it for? We actually find that that baptism is for a number of different things which we find throughout the Gospels. But today, I'm going to just talk about three areas where the baptism of the Holy Spirit works in the life of Jesus and is to work in the life of the disciple who follows him. The first thing we find is that after Jesus was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit took Jesus and drove him out into the wilderness. Why? So that he could confront the devil and put him in shame. What that means is that the Holy Spirit, now living and empowering Jesus, went out to show the devil that he is a defeated foe, that his time has come, and that he has to give way to the kingdom of God. 
Jesus confronted the devil and overcame him. And he overcame him in two ways. First of all, he overcame him by the power of the Holy Spirit. But what did the Holy Spirit do in Jesus? Jesus used what the Bible calls the sword of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God. Whenever the devil tempted him, he spoke the Word of God. And we need to understand the Word of God has the power of the Holy Spirit in it. And the devil had to flee. He had to give way. This is an example for us. If we as disciples want to overcome temptation, if we want to overcome the enemy, then we must have the Holy Spirit within us. As we read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, we overcome him who is in the world because he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. We cannot overcome temptation or overcome the devil by our own power and our own strength. It cannot be done. We are not that strong in and of ourselves. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, God himself, living in us so that we can overcome temptation and know how and when to use the word of God and speak it out and overcome the devil and move the kingdom forward. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to do that ministry. Now let me just ask you something. Jesus is the Son of God. He's perfectly perfect. And if He needs the Holy Spirit, do we need Him any less? We need Him more. So the first thing we see is that we need the Holy Spirit to overcome the devil, overcome temptation, and live a holy life so that we can pursue the things of God and move into the kingdom work that he has for us. Jesus did not move into the kingdom work until after he had overcome the devil. But now that leads us to something else. After he defeated the devil, then we read that he went and did what? He started preaching. He started proclaiming. Actually, in Luke, what's interesting is he, he was driven out into the wilderness by the devil, and then he went out to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. What that means then is that the Holy Spirit comes to Jesus to give him boldness to preach the word, to share about the kingdom, to call people to himself. We do not have any record at all of Jesus preaching the word and calling people to repentance and calling them into the kingdom until after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now it is true that he did go to the temple and when he was 12 he was talking with people in the temple but he wasn't actually preaching. He was asking and answering questions. That's all he was doing. But he wasn't proclaiming yet. But once he received the power of the Spirit, he began to proclaim with boldness what God was coming to do and what he had come to do. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we find that boldness, by the way, in other scriptures as well among the apostles. You know, Peter, Peter was a guy who, who, could, who could really talk the talk. But he hardly ever could walk the walk. He had great intentions. Remember, he was the guy that said to Jesus, you know what? I'm ready to die for you. And he meant it. But he didn't have the boldness to do it. And yet what happened after Pentecost? The Holy Spirit fell on him gave him a scripture, and he began to preach the word, and 3,000 Jews came to salvation in one moment. Where did that come from? Not from Peter. It came from the Holy Spirit. If we are going to speak the word and speak about Jesus and what he has done boldly, we're going to share what Jesus has done in our lives. We can't depend on our own flesh. We need the Holy Spirit. Spirit. 
And again, Jesus is the Son of God. And if He had to go in the Holy Spirit, and we meet Him once, we have to have more. And then finally, the third thing that we see is, and we don't find it in today's text, but we'll find it later on, we find that the Holy Spirit was in the Lord Jesus to confirm the word that He spoke. So in other words, He was speaking the word, He was teaching, He was giving the good news of the kingdom, and then what would happen? The Holy Spirit would confirm that word with miracles, wonders, and signs. People would be healed. People would be delivered. People would come to faith. The eyes of the blind would be opened. The ears of the deaf would be unstopped. People would have faith they never had before and turn and live. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's not the work of, of, of the Word of man. I can preach all day and it won't change anybody. But if the Holy Spirit will be to confirm it, then lives will change. Jesus was proclaiming the word with power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit confirmed that word. By the way, we find that in Acts chapter 19. We had a group of believers who had not even heard about the Holy Spirit. And Paul said, well, what were you baptized in then? Because you're going to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You should have heard of the Holy Spirit. They were baptized in the baptism of John. So when Paul declared to them Jesus as what they needed to be baptized in, well, they, they got baptized. And then God gave the proof that what Paul said was true because when Paul laid hands on them right after they were baptized, what happened? They got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues and prophesied. The Holy Spirit will confirm the Word. That's very important for us to see. And by the way, I find that very comforting myself. Because whenever I'm preaching or I'm praying for somebody, it's always good to know that I'm not in charge of results. I'm not. I'm only called to preach and pray. The Holy Spirit is in charge of results. And He does. He confirms the word. So, bottom line is this. Jesus says to us and to all who believe in him, as the Father has said to me, so I send you. As a church, we are called to continue the ministry of Jesus on earth to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every word we say, every miracle that happens, all of it is designed to get people saved and get them ready for heaven and the new creation that's coming and for faith and, and submission to Jesus Christ as Lord. It cannot be done without the power of the Holy Spirit. It can't be done. So if we want to see people saved, if we want to see them made new, if we want to see them new birth, if we want to see a revival, if we want to see people forgiven and changed, if we want to see people coming to Jesus, then we have to have the Holy Spirit. This is not optional for the Christian life. We have to have the baptism of the Spirit. But then the question becomes, how do we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And the answer is this. Jesus gives us the answer. The Bible is not complicated because God's not complicated. We often complicate God. But He's not complicated. He says this in Luke 11. Ask and shall receive. Seek, you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. And then the Lord says, How much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask 
By the way, I find that very instructive because what it says is, you know, we'll ask for a lot of things. We will. We'll ask for healing. We'll ask for salvation for our friends. We'll, we'll ask for all kinds of things that we need. And by the way, it's not that the Father doesn't care about those things. He does. But if you're going to categorize the most important things that he wants to give you, top of the list, number one is the Holy Spirit. So that you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added in. See, so often we want to chase after the blessings. And God is saying, why don't you chase after the Holy Spirit? Seek me. And we need to realize that if we ask, we will receive. Now, someone could say, well, you know, Pastor, there are people who have been asking, and they haven't received. Well, let me just answer that question real quickly. In that verse I just gave you, ask, you shall receive, see if you will find out the door will be open. The, the actual wording in the Greek is this, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock, keep on knocking. What that means is that many times when we ask, we should expect to receive that. We should believe we've received already, but the manifestation of it might take some time. It might be that someone's praying for that to come, just as our Lord Jesus was praying. And it may not come like that. In fact, I know people who have gone from church to church, meeting to meeting, looking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they have never received it. And then, and then, and then they give up, right? I, I've seen this. Because I, I, I watched it happen. They give up, they decide, all right, this is not for me. And they show up to church, and they're like, all right, Lord, I just, I'm here again. I'm ready to receive. And then just for that one moment, finally, boom, they get it. And the Holy Spirit comes on. What does that say? It means that God is sovereign about these things. He picks the time and the place. What that means then is don't be discouraged if you're praying and seeking that and it doesn't come right away. It might come right away. I'm not trying to tell you it won't. But there are a lot of times when we need to seek and keep on seeking and keep pressing in because there are things that God wants to do in us to prepare our hearts to receive from Him. Things that we're not even aware of. But He is. So if you want to receive, ask. Keep on asking. Keep pressing in. And the guarantee is that at the moment that God has appointed for you, you'll receive. And once you receive, then start moving. In fact, don't wait to feel it. Start to move right away and pray for people. And see if they're good. And you'll be amazed how God operates in that. But understand, we can do nothing, nothing, without the power of Jesus working in us. He says in John 16, apart from me, you can do nothing. And he is the one who is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. Not Pastor Rob, not any other pastor, is Jesus. So seek him. Ask that at the sovereign time that God appoints, you will receive. But be committed to act once that happens. Because whatever we receive is not for us, but it's for His kingdom. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the provision that you give us to receive your Holy Spirit through your Son, Jesus. Lord, we need you, and we need that gift. And so, Lord, we just ask and knock, and we know that we receive. 
Father, grant us the baptism of the Spirit and the refilling of the Holy Spirit, so that we may know you better, so we may be empowered, Lord, to reach out to others and bring the glory of your kingdom as we share boldly what you have done for us. We're yours, Lord. And we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Come and establish your throne in each one of us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
believe in God, the Father of all the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all people of God and Christ Jesus and for all people according to their names. Great Heavenly Father, it is your will that all people should come to you for your Son. Stir up your Holy Spirit within your church and in this congregation. That we may have thought word and deed, reveal the good news of Jesus Christ, and bring many to saving faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you've commanded us to pray for our nation, and so, Lord, we pray your salvation for our president, <coughs> vice president, the Senate, the House, the Supreme Court, our governors, state legislatures, state, local, and federal officials, and judges. Lord, where they're right, sustain them. But where they're wrong, grant the spirit of grace and supplication to recognize their wrong, warn over their sin as for an only son, throw all their iniquities and decrees into the fire and be burned up forever, and establish policies that are pleasing in your sight and for the furtherance of your kingdom. We also pray, Lord, a great awakening and revival in your churches. Burn out, Lord, every root of branch and compromise of sin and worldliness. So, Lord, if we would truly shine like the sun, and be filled with your spirit, with all the gifts and the fruits of the spirit that you give, Lord. And the people would taste and see that the Lord is good as we proclaim the word of God, as you grant his divine appointments to share boldly the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ our Lord, and that many can come to save in faith. Lord, we also pray for our nation that you would cleanse us, cleanse us, Lord, from every spirit of deception. Cleanse us, Lord, from every spirit of murder and suicide. Cleanse us, Lord, from every spirit of idolatry, bitterness, rage, anger, hatred, jealousy, unforgiveness, and unbelief. Lord, cleanse us, Lord, and forgive us for the shedding of innocent blood. Especially, Lord, we pray that you would forgive us and cleanse us from the iniquity of abortion. And Lord, we pray too, Lord, that you would cleanse us, Lord, from idolatry, and from the idolatry of looking to our own strength. Lord, forgive us our worldliness. Forgive us, Lord, our immoralities. Forgive us, Lord, and bring the Holy Spirit awakening to our nation, that people's eyes would be opened. Lord, strip away the scales from our eyes that we can see. Bring every heart of stone that we should receive hearts of flesh to receive your spirit. Unstuff our ears so we can hear your word and come to faith. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the view of the word of God. Lord, bring us to our knees in true repentance, and bring a blessing to our nation as we, as we cry, blessed is he, Jesus Christ, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for the people of Israel, we pray your peace and righteousness in Jerusalem. Let now be the time that they recognize you, the one who they pierce, the one over you is for a lonely sight, be cleansed by your blood, filled with your spirit, and join in your church as the one new man. We also pray for your church in Israel and throughout the world that you would give to them and to us the grace to preach your word of power while you lift up your hand and heal the miracles, wonders, and signs attend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the healer. By your stripes, we are healed. Thank you for that. We pray the healing that you purchase on Calvary's Hill in the Raja Rolas, Aspen Heisler, and Werner. Jalen Van Sweet, Donald Rollins, Bryce Johnson, Robert Edmund, Jerry Rosecrans, Ken Israel, Betty Mesterson, Janine Westy, Marilyn Worsted, Bruce Coates, Helen Van, Doug Sorry, Oliver Sorry, Kathy Schaefer, Douglas Hurston, Rufa Kahara, Monica Parks, Dorothy Johnson, Gianna Farr, Mary James Lovren, Joe Brightock, Carol Resendez, Mickey Overbowl, Josie Uthi, Leah Kuni, Robert Vanderhead, Doug Hasselton, Laurel Erickson, Troy Horn, uh, Louis Hurstman, and Lord, we pray your blessing on all those we mention now, whether out loud or in our hearts.
Lord, I pray for our brothers and sisters at Gilgit again, and I thank you, Father, for keeping them safe. I want to pray for Carter, also for uh, Audrey Schaefer. Thank you for the healing that is taking place in my niece Sarah and yes. that we prayed for three, four years ago and she's getting married today and hmm. we pray that you will bless her and will bless our marriage. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thanks, God. Lord, we also lift up uh, Pastor Mike and Jared, and Dawn and Claire, as they're all uh, doing uh, ministry in Africa. Lord, we pray surrounding your holy angels to keep them safe. Uh, Lord, that, that you would go before them, uh, that they would preach your word, and that you would confirm that word through your miracles, wonders, and signs, and that you would come to faith, that you would bring them home safely as well. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayers. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of you to pray, trusting in your mercy for your sight. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace in the Lord be with you always. And also and with you. Peace in the Lord.
Jesus Christ, right? And you would give you this place. Thank you. 